Mr. Speaker. Do or die, come what may. Those are the words of the Prime Minister's likely successor. The truth behind the Brexit chaos in the Tory party is encompassed in those words. The Tory dream is to drag us out of the European Union no matter what the cost. Prime Minister, before you exit office, will you pledge to never vote for a successor willing to impose a devastating no-deal Brexit on all of us? Well, I have to remind the Right Honourable Gentleman yet again that he is due to be asked me questions about my responsibilities as Prime Minister. And I would remind him yet again that as Prime Minister, I voted three times in this House to ensure that we could take the UK out of the European Union with a deal that was good for the whole of the United Kingdom. And he voted effectively for no deal. Ian Blackford! My goodness, it's no wonder she's leaving. That was no answer to her question. The Prime Minister is showing gross cowardice. On the one hand, the Tories are asking people to put their faith in the most incompetent Foreign Secretary in a century, a man who has made a career out of lying, who has spent his week avoiding the media, staging photos and playing to the extreme delusions of the Tory shires. Most incompetent health secretary in our history. A man, a man who, who writes books on privatising our NHS. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives clearly don't like the truth. Someone so desperate for a chance at his 30 year Downing Street fantasy that he's. Uh, I think the Right Honourable Gentleman's concluded his inquiry. Well, well if he. Oh, Order, or order. If he hasn't, he needs to do so in a single sentence. Order. I don't. Or oh, Mr. Cowan. I'm sure you're a well-intentioned fellow, but I require no counsel from you. One sentence. We've got a lot of questions to get through. A sentence. Well done, Mr. Blackford. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, in her last days in office, will she finally act in the best interest of these islands, not the Conservative Party? and admit that neither of the candidates for office should ever be elected Prime Minister. Can I say to the Right Honourable Gentleman, either of the candidates for this high office would do a darn sight better job than anybody sitting on any of those benches. 